monsters do have their place. In the zoo, in your nightmares, in the deep, in your favorite horror movies. But not in your living room, on your TV. Don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room. Pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free. If you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV. Hey, hey. Indigo made the beat. Welcome to another edition of the Heroes Peak Podcast. I'm your host, Chris, and with my wonderful co-hosts. <laughs> Sorry, I looked at your name, James, and I was going to call you Cassie and Andor. Um, <laughs> but my wonderful hosts, Keep Mike and James, are here with me to do our end of the year top five television picks. Da 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 da. It's been a dialon, 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 dialon. I was going dialogue. with tar all year. I don't know what you guys are doing here. I just, I just want to get onto the New York Times list. You know what I mean? Just mm. no, seriously. We are going to go our top five favorites. We might even pick a worst of the year if we feel like it, and maybe some other awards if we're so inclined. As we're having our wonderful conversation here, this is not so much of a debate. It's just an opinion piece at this point. Uh, we spent all year debating these these shows. Uh, we may make fun of each other for a few picks, but I doubt we'll be too far off from our top fives, to be 100% honest. Um, but let's make this simple, make this quick. Going to go direct to our number five pick. For me, this is absolutely the most difficult pick of the entire year, is to pick the number five. Because that means mm. of my... 12, 12 TV show shortlist. I had to drop off, you know, seven. Yeah, seven off off the list. So let's hear what you guys have for your number five. Mike, I'll let you start. Man, so, you know, like I was saying, Damn, Mike. Um, my list is together. I didn't really even get to, like, order them because it was really tough. I think, though, I think I'm going to go number five this year. Uh, which was probably the final season of this show uh, and mm -hmm. a great close to the series. And we had been waiting a long time for it to come back, uh, which it originally started on Fox and then was picked up on Hulu. And that show is the Orville. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. wow. So the Orville became okay. what we had hoped Star Trek Discovery would have been in terms of new <laughs> Star Trek. And now the Orville is in no way, shape, or form related to the Star Trek universe. It is Seth MacFarlane's mm -hmm. idea of that this that utopian future society of space explorers, right? <clears throat> and mm -hmm. like I said, this season was the mm -hmm. last one. Uh, I think they ended it pretty well. Uh, great way to close out the show. There were some ups and downs, but overall, uh, a strong comeback for this season. So that's my number five. The Orville wasn't wasn't even on my <laughs> radar. I didn't even watch. It. I think James bought some of it, <laughs> but that I I watched I watched it. Yeah, I, that last episode. I think the penult penultimate episode really should have been mm. how that show yeah. ended. Because uh, that last episode, the wedding. Yeah, was that was more like <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. let's wrap everything up kind of thing, right? So, all right, yeah. James, what's your number five? So my number five is a show that is critically acclaimed but hasn't gotten much press in regular pop culture shows. And it's The Bear, which is on FX via I kept via meaning Hulu. to watch Same that. Here. I've you heard so ask. much good stuff Same about here, it, yeah. and I never got around to it. Yeah. Mm. I wasn't really – it wasn't on my radar until Serena kept begging me to watch it one time. So I finally did binge it out. And uh, 
great recommendation. It stars um, Jeremy Allen White, who was an actor on the Shameless show on Showtime that I think went through six seasons and it, and it ended with, um, what's the dude from uh, Fargo, mm-hmm. the actor? He was the main actor. But anyway, so the show, or the synopsis of the show is real, is real simple. It's, um, he's like a, a well-renowned Michelin star rated chef in New York mm-hmm. who has to come back um, and take over his older brother's business because his older brother committed suicide. So he moves back to Chicago and it's an Italian beef sandwich shop. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, he's got the debt. He's got the, uh, cause his brother left him in his will, the shop. He's got already like unruly kitchen staff that's there, diverse people, really interesting. One of the characters is his cousin who was in the uh, Andor series as one of the, uh, the Aldani heist guys. Um, so brilliant acting by everyone, you know, throughout the show. Obviously, Jeremy Allen being the main star, he really, uh, I think he was a tour de force in this show. And unfortunately, it's not getting a lot of um, press, you know, it came out in June. Um, but for those who are in the know of critically acclaimed shows, this is definitely one of them. And that's why this one's my, my number five. Okay. All right. It's over to me, I guess. So, like I said, this was a tough one. Um, I was pretty able to get it down to three, three series here. That I, I I was battling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, uh, one of which being Dota Dragon's Blood, which is one of the few animated series that <laughs> made it to my list this year. Uh, I feel really oh bad at how little animation and the fact that none of my top five lists have have animation in them this yeah. year which is really See, rough thing, sure. really 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 bad that's shocking I mean, that's really, shocking for you we should um, have a separate category next year just for animated stuff and then movies and well normally action, i have right? nor, the last few years there has been a top five that has made it for yeah. me but this year i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say no and then the other two that we're fighting were pretty similar tonal mm-hmm. wise and that's the boys and Peacemaker, uh-huh. and I think I'm going with Peacemaker for my number five. And this was such a surprise for DC me. DC rises. <laughs> um, it came out early, you know, really early in the year, so it's kind of off everybody's radar, you know, towards the end of the year. But I think consistency has been an issue for a lot of shows. It was really well done consistently. John Cena <coughs> came out of the gate as a surprise uh, strong with a surprise strong character acting here. And uh, James Gunn always finds a way to bring the emotion in with all the goofiness, all the um, all the uh, uh, irreverent comedy, I guess you would call it that he that he throws in there, oh. maybe childish at times, actually. But he does find a way to get to the center of the characters. And uh, he did that with Peacemaker. Complete shock. And I'm going to go with Peacemaker as my number five. All right. Number four. We're not 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 parking. We're going to keep going. I'm going to do it in a snake order. You go again and then. You want to? Well, I can start. I'll start and we'll go back the other way. Yeah. So my it. number four, Rings of Power. Okay. Now, I know I gave this one an A+, plus, and, but I know compared to my other ones on my list, this is not the most tightly scripted show. Honest, like, I could be completely honest. It is not a super tight script. It, but for me, the beauty, the heart, the high fantasy, I enjoyed every second of this show. I just love being in the world of the Lord of the Rings and I just wanted to keep keep watching it, keep watching the production. Sometimes, you know, we've watched things like uh, Obi Wan, where they've thrown money at something, and you're like, "Where'd the money go?" <laughs> well, this, right? <laughs> there was no question about Lord of the Rings where the yeah. money went, and I, and I was I was very pleased to be watching it. So that's my number four, The Rings of Power. James, what's your number four? So this show barely made my my top ten. By the way, Rings of Power you were just I know. talking about. It's okay. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it got booted off by someone else. Um, my number four is a show called Euphoria on HBO, starring Zendaya and a cavalcade of great cast members, Sydney Sweetie, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it came out in January early this year, so most folks may forget that this was part of 2022 cycle. Um, it did get a lot of Emmy nominations, including Zendaya winning uh, as an actress for the show. First time an African-American woman has won in years. Um, and season two, which is the season that just ended, uh, kind of took what season one crafted as a narrative of like a bunch of these kids in the suburbs, you know, doing drugs and alcohol and partying and having like teen life drama and some of the parents drama how they impact them and it went to another step where i felt like zendaya's character particularly and um i forgot the young kid's name the young white kid who's like oh, they gave a great backstory to his life um spoiler alert he dies at the end but um yeah they, they, yeah sorry spoiler alert i mean his character you see how he grew up and like is terrible and then ultimately tragedy how it ended um, which was second to Zendaya's character arc, which I thought was tremendous. Um, definitely something that I would recommend for parents with older teen children to watch, because there's a lot of dialogue that can happen after you watch some of these episodes. But that's definitely my number four. And of course, HBO, you know, HBO is going to be my top 10, top five, regardless. So there you go, Chris. All right, Mike. All right. Let me see number what four. we got here. Man, so much good stuff to choose from. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even gonna. I gotta have that one's gonna have to go. I'm I'm curious what Mike's because uh, if I use, we got four left, right? Like he's doing this live. Do everyone. I, he's doing this live. Uh, this is yeah, number so we, four. So, so yes, we you, have four. You, you have, have four left. I only one, have three. Two, three. You have four left. Yeah. And four. Damn. All right, I'm gonna have to go. Let's see. One, two, three. I'm gonna have to go Sandman. I think I'm gonna go Sandman. <laughs> oh, this is a surprise. This didn't even make my yeah, list this year. I thought it. Or, wow. Huh? Me neither. Agree. What, what, James? Go ahead. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I agree with uh, with Chris. Ooh. I agree with Chris. It didn't make my list either. Yeah, Sandman came out. Just so everybody knows, I mm -hmm. I bought I I I'm I've already bought three of the 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 um yeah. the comics. So I'm I'm slowly building that nice. collection. I'll probably go back and, and, and see it. This is not Sandman turned me off from Sandman. <laughs> Sandman made me more interested to go read Sandman. Well, I mean, for those who don't know, it's the Netflix show uh, based on mm. the Neil Gaiman stuff, uh, the DC comics uh, of the Sandman and that whole realm of of the, uh, what do you call them? The, the brothers and the sisters, I guess, of the... Uh, I, I almost said it. Yeah, incredible. they're kind of like that, um, but yeah, a little different. Right. Yeah, they're they're more more right. powerful than that for sure. So, uh, they control the different right. realms of reality, I guess. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot better mm -hmm. show than I I thought it would would be would come out. So, uh, mm -hmm. surprise mm -hmm. hit for me uh, this year. Yeah, I, it was enjoyable, but mm, but yeah, I'm glad I'm glad it's on on <laughs> someone's list though. Uh, all right, Mike. I hate to, because we're doing Snake Order, you you have to do number three now. Yep, so I'm going to go, see, this is tough for me, the top three here. I'm going to, okay, for number three, I'm going to go Better Call Saul. So, oh, there you go. Final season of Ooh. Better Call Saul did not disappoint. Mm. Uh, for those of you who kept up with Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, oh. know, that universe. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. This was the one where we, you know, we find, saw the final showdown of what happened to Saul Goodman before everything started happening in Breaking Bad. And, and then we got a little glimpse of post-Breaking Bad world at the end. So um, another one that did not disappoint. Mm -hmm. um, what's his face as Saul? He's probably, he's such an underrated actor. If you remember him from Nobody, that movie. Bob Odenkirk. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, his uh, girlfriend and his slash wife in the movie. She's also fantastic. Um, I don't think there's anybody in the show that's been this snuffed point for me so many Emmy nominations. Like, yeah. like those guys in this Breaking Bad world, they know how to cast people, they know how to write these stories, and it just keeps you glued to the screen the whole time. So, yeah, it starts from Vince Gilligan yep. all the way down, like from director to script writing. 
to the cast. It's just a. It, I mean, this show mm. was my number six, by the way. I don't know who you're yeah. asking. That was my number six. All right, James, what's your number three? My number three is a little independent TV show that was on Netflix called Stranger Things. <laughs> a little independent. Um, season four. Holy shit, I completely forgot about During Stranger Things, too, man. Because <laughs> that was up there. That's mm. just yeah. justice for Eddie, man. Yes. Justice for Eddie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This this was season four this year that came out in July during the summertime, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the way they did it is they broke it down to two yeah. volumes, right? They gave you a bunch of episodes of volume one, and then they gave you like two or three episodes. If I remember correctly, as volume mm-hmm. two. Um, the volume two was probably what's going to be nominated for all types of crazy um, uh, Emmy nominations and Golden Globes, oh, yeah. and it was a tremendous show. It this is a show that's rare where it picks up. Each season it gets better and better. In my opinion, it gets better and better and better. Season one, we all loved it because the nostalgia factor, most of us being, you know, 80s kids growing up, we all connected to it. And then our younger children who didn't grow up in the 80s connected to it for different reasons. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like a family watch, right? And then season two, Absolutely. you know, the adults in the show got a little more serious. And then season three, the plot became pretty good. And then season four wrapped it all up where it actually went back and connected the first season with the the main antagonist that you kind of like forgot about in season mm-hmm. three well guess what it all was like it's almost like a marvel infinity saga like <laughs> thread so this was definitely <laughs> this is definitely you know i gotta always throw it back to an mcu reference um this was definitely my third favorite tv show of this year oh this is gonna be a real tough tough uh list james because my number three this year is also Stranger Things season four. There you go. Um, so yeah, it it nice. it brought everything. It brought the emotional weight. It we weren't sure what to expect because a lot of the actors, it's it, there was a gap between three and four, and a lot of these young actors have grown up quite quite visual, <laughs> quite obviously. It's like Walt and Lost. <laughs> Remember Walt and Lost. And so, uh, yeah, for them, suddenly you have this like Sasquatch walking around where, where, where like a 14 year old is supposed to, whatever. No, no, they're like seniors. Chest hair. Are they everything. seniors this year? I don't remember. They're, no, they're collecting juniors. social security they're, they're checks. Like, what are you talking about? 16. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, this, it was a great season and it was, it, the best season probably the show has had. I mean, First seasons are always feel the best because they're new and they're fresh and it's out of nowhere and whatever. But honestly, I think this is probably the best season of Stranger Things. It leaned more towards the horror elements, whereas like season one was more like the Steven Spielberg sci-fi elements of the 80s, whereas this leaned more towards the horror Stephen King kind of elements of the 70s, 80s. Um that it are it, its inspirations and one of the few shows that you can feel the inspirations but you don't feel like it's just a layer where it's like oh they're just showing me a shot that i'm supposed to remember relates to something i've seen before it actually feels like its own thing that's taken a lesson from something from before it yeah and it's so yeah season it's funny when the kids are now they're listening to the 80s music because of the shows like this right and I have to remind him. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, who's an artist that had a had a resurgence? Yeah, running the up the hill, that, running on the uh, hill. Yeah, like People. not that she was. It wasn't like she was yeah. broke financially, but that song now <laughs> raised her her tax bracket <laughs> tremendously. Right. Well, you know, I got to remind you know, the kids um, that that you know that music is twenty years old. So. <laughs> yeah, they know. Yeah, they know. Kate Bush. Kate Bush. Yeah. Kate Bush. All right. And the eighties for me will always and be yeah. twenty years right, ago. Chris, you're up again, number two. That's right. The eighties <laughs> will always be twenty years ago. I know. All right. Um, that is true. So snaking back around to number two. Heavy Woo. hitters now. Now my number two, I went back and forth between one and two. They 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 switched spots. They were they were felt same neck here. and neck. Yep. And as I'm, <laughs> no, I know where this is going. I know where this is going because you probably and... have the same one and two that I do. <laughs> we probably. We probably all as, have the same as, top two. Right. 
as someone who lives obviously from my list and you know we'll go through our almost made it's uh i live in a lot of an ip universes i love them i enjoy them i have no problem with them but sometimes there are shows that make it into your world past all the other ones and um just stay with you and that's going to be severance my number two so uh yeah severance came out another one early in the year it wasn't on my radar Mm -hmm. you know i saw um the writer apple tv um why am i blanking on the writer the comedy writer um uh ben Ben stiller Stiller, having made Yep, having so. made one of my favorite movies of the decade of last decade. Um, and so I was like, Oh, that's, that's interesting. I'd like to see what Zoolander. Oh, no, not Zoolander too. I'm like, what? Uh, he the said secret, the last decade. The Hello. secret life. <laughs> the secret life of Walter. Oh, Mitty. Okay. That was a good, okay movie. I didn't... Oh, I never, I never I watched that. that. I mean, that's a yeah, remake, never, right? Um, so. Yeah. Is it? I, I don't know. It, I haven't seen the yeah, first the one. Yeah, the first one was like but, from the seventies. So, but it's also like a workplace, like not horror. Like this is more of a horror sci-fi. Obviously, mm. uh, Walter Mitty is more of mm. a workplace frustration. Escapist, yeah, escapism. Mm. Yeah, there you go. So, but uh, this this movie this show came out, and the first episodes were a bit. Uh, low key to put lightly, but it built and built and built and through solid writing, lo- great little twists, um, great uh, great acting, uh, it, it really just cemented itself as one of the best of the year. And Severance, you know, and it's one of those where I was audible in the last episode, <laughs> com- like constantly. And and that's a sign, I think, yeah, of a great. I think you show. caught it before Mike and I, and you were like texting <laughs> us immediately. I think you caught it before mm-hmm. Mike and I caught it. Yeah, man, that, that thing that thing grabbed me quick and it held on. All right, what about you, James? What's your number two? Surprise! My number two also <laughs> happens to be seven. Well, I'm just gonna come on and say it. that's my number which, two as well. Like so. you mentioned, there you so go. straight across the board. All right. So, I mean, for me, the reason why I like this show, and I was listening to see whether you're going to hit some of the same beats that I did, is this is one of the rare, actually even amongst my number one, where each episode gets better and better and no fillers. Yeah. Um, And if it wasn't for a number one having the highs, Mm -hmm. I would have probably put this one as my number one because it was, you know, it went up on an incline to the finale. Like, rarely have you seen a show where it starts at an Adir, maybe not Adir, it was, it was medium, and then just kept every episode just kept better and better. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's things like the score. I've become now uh, one of these um, elite cinephiles <laughs> where I'm now I'm listening to the music in the scene. It was never me 20 years ago. Right. But this show definitely has you hooked in some of the music that they, they, they choose to do. Um, some of the shots that they are doing, like in an par- open parking lot with one... Be- there's so many good things about this show that I thought outclassed almost every other show this year. And I'm glad that this was something that Apple TV took a shot with, with Ben Stiller and, and um, some of the actors like Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation uh, and some other lesser known shows he's done before. Patricia Arquette, obviously she's a well-known actress and then a lot of other unknown actors who took these parts and they smashed it. Um, so definitely, this was my second favorite show this year, and I'm looking forward to season two. Like the way that. Oh man, and, yep. yeah, um, yeah, man. For That's me, like two. this creepy sci-fi is right up my alley. Like yeah, as much as I love, you know, space <laughs> battles and 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 you know, fighting robots and all that stuff. Creepy, twisted sci-fi, like Twilight Zone type stuff. You know, that's that's what I love—the mystery and the, the 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 thrill of it, right? And this was right up my alley this year for that type of genre, subgenre of sci-fi. <clears throat> um, cast was fantastic. The setting, that whole, you know, it, it's it. What nothing was overdone in terms of stage design or, or set design, and you know what I mean. Just enough. Mm-hmm. It was actually really, really small. Mm-hmm. It kept everything almost like seventies 
sheet. Right. Like mm-hmm. uh, seven seventies office chic, and it was really yeah. Hard. Even the outside world when they were on the outside. Might just they didn't nothing yeah. was too extravagant out there. When in the cabin, right. when they were at the cabin house, yeah, it wasn't just a the working environment. It was also the other um like the cabin settings. I think two episodes where they featured his um sister in law and um brother in law when they were a little that little yep. compound cabin that felt like an actual, you know, piece, you know. But yeah. All right, Mike. No, Number hey, one, so what, what we should do if you guys don't mind, we should take a break. Let's talk. Why don't we do? Why don't we discuss mm-hmm. our mentions, our honorables, and then we can review our number one. Yeah, and then we'll then we'll do. Number oh yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. And then yeah. and then we All gotta right. talk. Are we doing worst of as well? Yeah, we'll do a worst of. I only got we'll, one. We'll, do, we'll see how much time some, we have. Some, right? Yeah. yeah. Not honorable. All right. Yeah. Yeah. How much fun? Yeah. We have? I, I only chose one. I, I didn't want to. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, All right. Like, I guess so. We'll be back. So we, anyway. before we move on, I just want to uh, give a shout out to Amanda Overton, who one of the writers oh, yeah. for Severance, who graced a, graced me with a, a a an interview earlier this year. So everybody always go back and and take a look at that. It is our most popular video. Which so um, as a little fun, uh, what were you? What were the the your short list? What what made it? into your finals but or i would say what made it into your own uh top, top 10. 10 honorable mentions honorable mentions uh, but not quite to the finals what did you guys have so I'll, I'll go around the horn here uh james what did you have all right i'm gonna go and and these these this group of five i'm not gonna rank them between six seven eight nine ten mm-hmm. just gonna but I'll tell you each show and like maybe a you know, quick reason why i like the show better call Saul. um mike already hit all the solid points i'm not going to get into it um great way to end that whole um mythology of the show so superb cast everything's great um after that harley quinn which was on mm. hbo max um i think this season was definitely my favorite season of the show um i hope with all the turmoil that's happening in dc that this show gets a reprieve and not, you know, mm-hmm. go by the wayside. Um, another show that most of you guys may not be aware of, it's Industry on HBO. It just concluded its second season. Mm. And it stars mostly European cast with a few American actors and actresses. Um, it's another one of these type of finance, trading business type shows, but with... Drugs, sex, alcohol in the background. Um, some pretty good topics about uh, family, uh, homosexuality, corruption, business corruption, white collar crime. Great show. Um, and then my next two shows are probably something that both of you guys will raise your eyebrows on. Maybe not Mike. Chris probably. Interview with Vampire. It came out in six episodes or seven episodes. It wasn't that. It was like a short series on AMC. And thanks to Mike, I got to see both the the AMC TV version was edited for television. But there's another version that's available, I don't know, AMC Plus, that's very oh, HBO yeah. like graphic. Oh wow. Um, so I got to see both yeah, I got to see both versions and another show where I grew up reading Anne Rice books mm-hmm. since mm-hmm. since I was in elementary school, way above my way, you know, above my, my age. And I think this show pays more homage to the original Anne Rice adaptation than Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and uh, what's her name? Aaliyah, God rest her soul. Those versions of the movies in the 90s. And then lastly, DC Stargirl. Oh! I mean, Mike, you have to watch oh. this season. You have, And I know they're, they're gone. The, the series ended. And the way the, and I read some interviews, the writers and Jeff Johns and those guys didn't know at the time when Discovery bought DC what would happen. So they wrote two scripts. They wrote a script with a cliffhanger for a potential new season, season four. And then they wrote a version where they conclude the entire series. So obviously, when they when shit happened, they oh, no. they edited the version where the, the show conclude. Um, and I think this was probably I haven't seen a great season of a DC TV show since the days of Arrow and the first couple of seasons of Flash or the first couple of seasons of Legends Tomorrow. So I would recommend at least the Heroes Peak crew here, since we do talk a lot about comic book stuff, to watch this show. Give it a shot. It, it should be available. On the CW um, 
app or wherever you get your other um, stuff legally or, or, or not. <laughs> um, definitely recommend it and definitely made my honorable right. mention. And that's it. Nice. Mike. All right. So a couple. So right off the bat, this one is one I made fun of James for watching uh, because it's basically rich, rich white people <laughs> problems. And I'm like, why the why the hell are you wasting your time watching this show? But it turned out to be an amazing show, and that's Succession <laughs> on HBO. So nice. James did his review with his friend uh, Mike uh, earlier this year after season Mike. three ended. Mike. Mm-hmm. I sat there and produced the episode. I edited the episode, and I had no, no, none of what they were saying made sense. So after I watched season three, I rewatched their their great review, which you guys should check out. By the way, shout out to you because you made edits of certain <laughs> scenes from what we were talking about without watching the show. I'm like, how the fuck did he do that? That's shout out to you. Yeah, luckily I, I was able to find the points pretty much where you guys were talking about, but. After watching it, your review made so much more sense and was spot on. And this show is great. Brian Cox, fantastic as the patriarch of the family. <laughs> and the struggle with the kids and the whole thing. It just ended up being a great watch. And I'm looking forward to season four there. Real mm-hmm. quick, real quick, Mike. I think he and the, when, you, when I look at all these shows, including our number ones, I think Brian Cox may have gotten the best acting. I think so, too. Mm. Period. I, think, well, I guess yeah. I haven't watched it, so I don't know. Well, but there's, the there's when, there's only, he won yeah, the Emmy, I think, for show. Best Acting this year. So He did. He Yeah, he won. But usually, <laughs> I mean, just take that with a grain of salt. Sometimes you you, know, yeah. you could argue about that. But he definitely deserved it. Okay. Uh, one second. Ahead, Mike. Sorry, COVID, guys. You know how it is. <laughs> right. Okay, so my next one is also uh, HBO. And sadly, it was canceled. But it was um, the series version of The Time Traveler's Wife uh, with Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones, uh, based on the novel, which was made into a movie about 10 years ago with Eric Bana and uh, Rachel McAdams about uh, basically a time traveler and him going, meeting his wife when she was a child and then at different points in her life and all that good stuff. Great, great uh, sci-fi drama. Um, Great chemistry between the two lead actors um and i was looking forward to them expanding the story from the novel and unfortunately it didn't get enough viewers to get picked up for another season but that was on my list for this one uh another one that uh i really <clears throat> hadn't heard too much about until uh you know i saw it on the uh, on demand stuff was tokyo vice which is also on hbo uh with the dude from um, Taron Egerton, isn't it? Taron no, Egerton? no, the guy from Baby Driver. What's his, I don't forget his <coughs> name? Uh, so no, so it's not Solo. It's, no, not um, Solo. I know who you're thinking about, but not not that guy. Hang on, Tokyo. He's from the musical. The, the yeah, Baby uh, Driver. Yeah, Ansel El- Shit, Elgort is his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ken Watanabe is in it. He, so he uh, Ansel plays a journalist. He's exposing these. Uh, What's going on with the the, the yakuza back in the? Uh, it's mm. it's like in the nineties or something. He, he when he just started in journalism, he he's from the states, but he graduated from journalism, and moved to Tokyo to go work for a newspaper, and starts getting involved mm. with the the yakuza there, and a whole bunch of stuff uh, starts happening. So it's very uh, very good mm. uh, intrigue show. I think it got picked up for season two, so put that one on my list. Uh, I think I'm just gonna mention one more that I was actually surprised was uh, Reacher. Now, if you guys remember, they did... So, Jack Reacher is a series of novels, um, and they made a Tom Cruise version movie, which the first one was pretty good, and the second mm-hmm. one, not so much. Uh, but the uh, the series is on Amazon, I believe, played by the guy who did played Hawk yeah, on Titans. Yep. And he actually killed it in this role as uh, Jack Reacher. So... Wait, but he was he was the original one though, right? It was what's his name, Kaczynski. Um, no, no, you're Spider-Man? thinking of um, Tom Clancy. You're thinking of the Tom Clancy yeah, one, Jack Ryan. You're thinking oh, of Jack, Jack Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you're right. There's you're right, so right, many right. shows, man. I know. Yeah. Would you actually? But yeah, the, the actor from. I should um, tell you the truth. Jack Titans Ryan is a decent show in itself, yeah. but Reacher actually surprised me how well it was done. Mm. So, 
Um, shout out to that one. So those are my honorables for this year. All right. So my honorables. So this is where all of my animation landed. Now I watch a lot of, of non 2022 animation. <laughs> I always, the problem with anime is I always end up going through just going, Oh, that looks cool. Watching it going, Oh, that came out in 2014. Like, <laughs> so it doesn't quite make the end of year list, but a couple of animation did my, make my uh, short list here. Um, Demon Slayer Entertainment Arc, Entertainment District Arc. Mm. I loved it, but the reason it didn't make the top is because it's two episodes of story and like five episode fight, which is awesome. It was gorgeous, gorgeously animated, fun to watch. It's usually opposite. But, the, but there really yeah. isn't usually opposite. Isn't much story. There wasn't much story to the entertainment to Entertainment District Arc. Like right? Am I right, Chris? Usually, it's opposite, yeah. Normally, right? usually... yeah. It's a lot of story and flashback, and then like, yeah, no. This if if you want to just like start at episode three and just like the entire rest of the season is one fight. It's not even a bunch of fights. It's one fight, <laughs> and it's not a Ooh, Dragon Ball it. power up for an episode. It's action the entire way through. So it was great watch. Absolutely recommend it if you if you enjoy that. Um, I'm gonna put it in my Harley list. Quinn season three, as James had mentioned. Uh, this was a, a, a great season, fun to watch, um, and DC DC manages to do this Peacemaker, um, the James Gunn style, rated R stuff really well in both live action and animation. It's it's really where they kill it, and uh, hopefully they continue to do that. Uh, Dota's Dragon's Blood season three. This was the uh, the best season of that show. Uh, also animated, and it was a surprise. I just I just love the whole thing. By the way, let, let them know what network or channel. Oh, uh, Demon stuff. Slayer, I believe is on Crunchyroll. So I'm watching I'm okay. watching a lot of it. Crunchyroll, you can get free. Uh, you just got to sign up and watch some ads. Uh, you don't get everything, but you do get quite a bit on Crunchyroll. Um, uh, Dota Dragon's Blood's on Netflix. Netflix does quite a bit of animation or, or their own custom anime. Uh, it's hit and miss most of the time. I just watched uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Good recommendation. A another another custom from Netflix. Um, why did my thing go? Okay, uh, Harley Quinn, of course, is on HBO Max. Something not mentioned here today: The Boys, season three. The Boys was great. It was it was almost there. It wasn't quite as good as previous seasons, I think, but it did hit the spot for The Boys. And Anthony Starr is probably my number one actor, uh, number one character actor of the year. Man, that guy was hitting just every emotional range. Yeah, he, he's right yeah. below Brian Cox. Dude. Right below Brian. I think. Oh. I think for me. So yeah, you're right. The boys was great this year, but for me, I think the problem with it, it seemed like they were going for more, more for shock value than for story. With the I didn't even think it was that shocking. And it wasn't. It wasn't consistent. Like they kept. Yeah. They kept calling consistent. out. They were going to do the 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 whatever party mm -hmm. where everybody was supposed. to. Orgasm yeah, and or and I, I was like, Orgasm this isn't. Power. I've seen worse than this on this very show. <laughs> like it, it really wasn't that shocking. Yeah. So I was surprised, but it was good. I don't want to like put it down because it was good, but like Anthony Starr, man, that guy's amazing. Um, House of the Dragon. Yeah, uh, I, I did just just I a good put that solid on my list. That was show. a great show. Yeah. You didn't like uh, House and, of the Dragon, James. Mm -hmm. No, they had great okay. scenes All and right. moments. But as a show, it was so You guys are going to hate me? Especially compared to Game <laughs> of Thrones. When I watch Game of Thrones yeah. and you watch this, yeah. come on, dude. Come on. You guys are going to hate me? She-Hulk? Maybe my short list? No, it was up I there. I was thinking about that one, too. Bored. So, Out of out of all, uh, it, like, we could probably have a discussion. One of the few comedies, straight comedies. Yeah, I mean, we could have a discussion just on Marvel stuff this year, like, and rank it, but. Like, She-Hulk would be up there for me this year, I think. All right. And last one I do want to call out before we finish in this section is Midnight Mass. 
This was actually mm. uh, probably really close. Probably show. number six on my Aww. list. Six or seven. Uh, I really liked it. A, oh, for some reason I'm thinking that was a movie. No, You're Midnight right. Mass. It was that, that horror island I remember. with the priest thing. Yes, the vampire priest. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that the one. The angel. But it wouldn't have made my top five. No, no. It yeah, wasn't it quite this been other been shows. Yeah. Again, a lot of it comes down to how tight these top shows were, I felt like, just beginning to end compared to some of the <clears> other ones. Um but yeah, that's those are those. Well, I could have bumped Star Girl and put that one in there. Now that I think about it, all right. Yeah. Give me. I, I hate to do a hate watch, but give me something. Be, TV's tough because if you don't like something, you're less likely to actually watch it. So I'm gonna allow you because uh, I'm gonna do it. If you hated something on the first episode and didn't watch it, this can be your worst of the year as well. Yeah, give me a second. So, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, there was a few of those. I have. I got my worst of the year. I had my worst of Go the year primed. So, yeah, we started talking about Marvel and She-Hulk, but She-Hulk was just slightly better than <laughs> this candidate, which was mm. Miss Marvel. Oh, wow. This was a it's your worst show. of the year. Wow. Miss Marvel was That's... a terrible show. <laughs> and you know why? On first, on first pass, I was giving it all types of, like, you know, hey, you know, maybe this, maybe that. This episode will get better. And then it just kept going and going. And I had a pretty deep texting discussion with Mike mm-hmm. in the episode when they went overseas to Pakistan. <laughs> and then the show just got worse and worse and worse and worse. Like, I don't think it's been a, a, a TV show this year that I really despise <laughs> after the finale. That I was just like, wow, Marvel, you really shit the bed on this one. Like I get the I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring more diversity to a character that wasn't that popular when he came out in the early two thousands and you're hoping to bring in this extra audience and you're tying it to the main MCU universe. How did she come out? But every story, plot, character, every device that they threw at us was just terrible. And that's definitely my worst T V watch of this year. Wow. It's not where I expected you to go, but yeah, go for it. Um, so, I don't know when she first first aired. I thought it was in the last 10 years. Anyway, all right. So, if it's a something I didn't finish because it was horrible, the number, my worst of the year would be the Pentaveret, which was the Mike Myers, like, playing... 15 different character um, Netflix comedy. And it was sad because I had high hopes for that one because um, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Keith Michael mm-hmm. Key was in, supposed to, is in it and, you know, it was a good cast. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, this could it be just interesting. Felt so dull and boring. Never yeah, it's on Netflix. Oh, it was, yeah. It's a Netflix show, Mike it Myers. Terrible. It's about a secret society. Uh, that basically, mm-hmm. it's like the Illuminati, you know, running the world, mm-hmm. the comedy version, right? Right, but they're <laughs> good guys or something. Yeah. Like that. Um, if it's something I finished that I think is the worst thing of the year that I finished, that would probably be oh. Picard Season 2. Which one? And that's oh. Picard Season 2. Oh, wow. I enjoyed the characters. Sh- shots fired at you, Mike. <laughs> I enjoyed the characters, but... That was such a messy season. It was. It was. I'm not gonna lie. It did it was. not. It did not fulfill any of the promise of the first season. It didn't even feel like they were trying to push an interesting social commentary, which we've gotten in our which our number one, which we'll get to next, you know, or something like that. Mm. It was just. Ugh, it was messy and and just kind of. Uh, dragged itself over the finish line for me yeah it was i don't know i hope they do better like the the season three the coming up of picard is supposed to have the all of the original next generation cast coming back and some and some right. ds9 right. people and stuff like that so i hope for, hopefully they'll fix it they, they started getting into that rut that you know discovery okay. did that you know, they just didn't know where they were going, I guess, with the stories. Well, and they were tr- trying to delve mm. into Picard's family past. Yeah. And, his, and that just it wasn't hitting right. And then 
Q Q was kind of <laughs> lackluster. I mean, the whole thing started you know, great when the, the board came back, and you know, you're talking about a new board queen and all. There was so much potential, mm-hmm. and then it just went Boop. okay. <laughs> then they're like, "Hey, by the way, the so 2020 sucked," one. and you're like, "Yeah, I know. I'm living it. <laughs> it's okay." Do you have one you want to call out? Yeah, I, I do. I do. So I'm gonna. Sorry. So the one I'm gonna call out, I think, is that uh, Resident Evil show on Netflix. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, stop fired. it, yeah, man! Stop fire it. Back. I tried, I tried watching it. it. I just couldn't do it. It was just awful, awful to me. It wasn't that yeah, bad, <laughs> dude. Stop it. That's fine. I couldn't do it. it wasn't Sorry. That bad. And it got yeah, me and my it's, kids were watching that. Could have been better. It's been canceled, yeah. by the way, so you don't have to worry anyway. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I know, and I was pissed. It wasn't. It wasn't great, but me and my kids were having a blast watching. No, yeah. exactly, Chris. Same thing. Like I thought it was like entertaining, but kind of brain dead. Yeah, <laughs> literally brain dead. Okay. The one, the, the one, ep- the one episode with what's his name and his multiple brothers. That was a great episode of TV. It's just that the rest of the sad show, thing too is I'm a I'm a big fan of Lance Reddick, right? Like I love when he like he from Friends yes, and all that stuff. Was, that's was He's a great of, actor yeah. in The Wire, so. He is good. He's good. That episode with him and all his brothers, that was good television. I don't even know if I got that far. <laughs> Come on, Mike. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, my God. Uh, that opening was all right, but I think I don't know, I don't, we're not going to get to that. Let's get to the fun stuff, and that is our co-number one. <laughs> we've done this. I think we've done this several times where we've all agreed where a number one show of the year is, and it. it That's not good. I mean, the last one I think we we all agreed on was um, Watchmen. When that came out, that was a a co-number one by Yeah, that was a great show. We did, we did, yeah. That was a great show. But this isn't Watchmen. This isn't 2019 or whatever year that came out. This is 2022. And it's really important for everybody to know that the best show of the year is Andor. No, wait, I had Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> Where's Brooksy? <laughs> Shout out to Brooksy. I know, it was Brooks. But, no, it's Andor. It's a Disney Plus show, which, man, none of those were making my list. I know I know, I called out She-Hulk as the only one, but the Disney Plus shows have not been hitting, and that's one of the big things. Is we were worried, not only were we worried about big name ones not hitting, but then it was based on a character we didn't really care about. Now, we just had a review about this. Mike will probably put a little link to our, our review of Andor so you can get a full breakdown of why you should watch this show. But, man, you should watch this show. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think Andor, number one of the year? Yeah, man. That show did it for me, man. Good, Mike. That brought back so much nostalgia of classic 70s sci-fi as well. The set mm-hmm. pieces and the sound design and and the acting and all that stuff. Just that prison sequence alone was amazing. Um, this was the one also... Sorry, guys. Yeah. This was one I wasn't expecting much. Like I said, you know, on our review, they announced Andor. And I was like, why? Why, why do I need this show? <laughs> like, I don't really care. But, you, you know, do. it's the show's not really about him. It's it's his name, but it's not really about him. So it's, it's about his mom. It's bigger than that, and hitting people with a in the face with bricks. That's right. That's what it's about. <laughs> exactly. As a brick. As a brick. <laughs> Wait, isn't isn't there a Jedi that's a stone now? So so she could be a Jedi even as a brick. <laughs> could be. No oh boy. Who oh knows? Boy. But yeah, I can't wait for season. No, this two. show is considered. Like the word I would use is considered. Everything felt considered yeah the the tone the 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 every piece of furniture everything in the background every word it all felt like it was just so tightly wound so belonged exactly where it was supposed to be shout out to tony gilroy yeah man james do you want to shout out anything about andor specifically I mean, I mean, we're, we're going to be like waxing. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. 
but I, but I, but I do want to to add on to what Mike said. You know, last year during the Comic Con and the trailers are being released about Star Wars IP on Disney Plus. It was Book of Boba Fett, which was released in December. So December. excited! Yeah. Was really was, excited uh, for that one. <laughs> then it was, mm-hmm, then it was Kenobi, which was August. Mm-hmm. That was this year. And then this show, right? There were. This was like the least desired show, like Mike said. Like I was like, not even on my radar. I was like, I want to see Kenobi. We'll give Boba Fett a shot, and then whatever happens to Andor, or whatever, doesn't matter, right? Sadly, it was <laughs> Kenobi Boba Fett did not scratch the itch that I had for Star Wars that I was missing. Andor not only scratched the itch, but uppercut me to the point where I'm so in love with this fucking show. I've downloaded the soundtrack. I'll go to the gym and work out with my <laughs> shit on. Um, if I'm doing work, I'll play in the background. You know, it's like phenomenal show. And I know Chris is probably going to take it to the next level about this show. But I just got to say, like, I finally got Keith to start watching. I don't know how far he's in. I know he watched at least the first two episodes or first three. Um, and he's not into Star Wars at all. But it goes without saying, this show for me cleared the bar and only was able to surpass Severance as my favorite show because of the music, the tone, the directing, the everything that Chris was beginning to talk about. To me, it was just felt that much epic. You know, the the speech, the writing. You know, Severance was a great show. It made all that number two, but this was just one mm-hmm. extra step. There's also something to say about a social commentary like what does a show have to say and severance has something to say but it's a it's not quite as a big topic as our current world you know where you're talking about um fascism and fighting against fascism and how to spot it Mm -hmm. and and the banality of evil as people have said quite often in the reviews here um nobody's listening they're not listening to you. You know, it's just, and the, the little, it's not even just the big giant speeches that have been wonderful, the soliloquies, whatnot, but little things. If you say, I don't know how to swim to somebody who has seen and <laughs> it hits just as hard as Marva's giant speech about fighting, wow. right? Like just Eric's as favorite hard. Episode. Um, and it, it just did everything right. And it was a surprise. I think it, it's kind of like, you know, Obi-Wan came in as the New England Patriots. <laughs> and then this little 8-8 eight eight New York Giants team showed up. And everybody was like, oh, they don't have a chance. Mm-hmm. And then, bam. You know, Plexigo Burris makes a, a wonderful catch. <laughs> That's right. 18 and one. 18 and one. <laughs> so I know, I know James would appreciate a, a little bit of a, a sports analogy. I did. Yeah. I remember that night. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Perfect. They were the underdog that no one was looking for. And they came in and they shocked the, the pop culture geek world. I just wish this show had a lot more press to it than like the other shows that are in our top five. Cause it feels like I listen to tons of other podcasts on YouTube and the ringer. And they're all saying the same thing we're saying. Like, this show does not get enough credit how great it is. Like, if you're a Star Wars geek or if you're a general audience looking for something fresh, you can't complain if you choose not to watch the show because of, like, it's not getting a lot of press. Diego Luna and um, I forgot the actress. And Stella Skarsgård are probably the only well-known actors in this show. Everybody else is, like, you know, mid to lower tier acting professionals. But... It's out there. Like you can't complain about having good TV if you're not doing your, you know, the investigation. This show. Well, it's one of it's one of the, the few, of the if only, IP based shows that is making top TV lists for the year on most non geek mm-hmm. websites, right? On I've seen true. it That's in true, yeah. in people who who New York Times. Yeah, yeah I've seen it on regular. So I'm hoping it'll start to bring in some of that. At, uh, Disney also put it out there on Hulu and other some other services to try to goose goose its numbers. Yeah, they played it on the other night, mm-hmm. Christmas week. They played it first two episodes right. on ABC, which was a weird 
call because I would have played the first three episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think two. you're right. You need that. Hey, this is a mini story, that third a episode. mini arc. And yeah. I think one of the genius built into the thing is having that mini arc that feels complete when you watch through it. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> whereas, whereas things yeah. like Miss um, Marvel, even though she goes through certain events, it doesn't feel like those are complete arcs. It, it definitely feels like just kind of more spotty. <laughs> <trash>. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Andor, it's it. Just go watch it. It is the best show of the year. It is consistent. It is well made in every aspect you could ask for. So our next job will be our uh, end of year top list for movies. Mm -hmm. And that will be coming as soon as we can get Mm, together and record it. I'm actually completely prepared for this one. I'm the only person prepared for this one. (laughs) I need to do but homework. I need to do homework. I and mean, we need to get Keith and Brooks. On that's this one. because I I am a real geek and I keep track of everything I watch the entire year. <laughs> I can just sit and look look at the list. Don't try to shame us. I can just look You're at the list and go, geek. yes, don't, no, don't, yes. Don't be one of those toxic geek. No, I'm actually kidding. I only have my top four people. picked. My top my fifth one again. I'm just I can't quite decide. Mm. I'm going Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's going to be a good one. I'm yeah, sure I'll be told. Be movies are a little more contentious because you're more willing to watch a whole movie and it be bad or mid or good as compared to a TV show where you're like, I'm probably only going to finish this if I have some level of enjoyment out of it. Yeah. And so. True. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I think that's it. For, that's all we're going to do today. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I uh, I have a few few things on my list now. Of course, we got an entire new year coming up. TV is not stopping rolling. I'm watching the peripheral, peripheral, <laughs> watching Willow. Just so many good things peripheral, coming up. Yeah, it finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Willow's not bad so far. I'm not watching Willow. Nope. I started Wednesday. Wednesday was great. And mm. then I think I'm going to, yeah, I only got through episode one. Serena finished it. She was telling me to watch it. I was surprised and by the, the by that, White Lotus. The internet's response to when shout out to Chris. So I shout out to Chris, one of subs, who was pushing me to watch White Lotus. Yeah, is it good? I will get to it. What White Lotus? Yeah, he said it was great. All right. Yeah, White Lotus yeah. season one was good. I yeah, my co- season two. Yeah. It's actually getting critical. Yeah, it's getting critical acclaims for like top five on other people's websites. I was looking at it, and everybody had it. I didn't want to read into it because it was uh-huh. spoiling. But yeah, it's making a lot of top five um, lists. Yeah, my chiropractor suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> my <That's> parole <laughs> officer. <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. Yeah, no, I, just... I fall apart, so I need do- specialty you didn't say doctors. That you didn't say that, keep sure. me together. That's right. What does what, what your weed guy recommend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she, she listens to me. White Lotus. I, I make the recommendation. <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right, right, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us. We got one more show left to the year, and that will absolutely be our end of year list for movies. And uh, just, Mike, where can they respond to us? Tell us what TV they loved. Tell us what TV they hated. Tell us what list we were wrong on. (laughs) Uh, as usual, you can find us all over the internet at Heroes Peak, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Uh, Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell in the corner to get notifications. And leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought of our list of uh, top TV shows of the year. Uh, I think we missed something. Uh, I think uh, something we liked wasn't good enough. Let us know. All right, everybody. Yeah, leave comments. There's a handful of us that are actually leaving comments on TikTok and and other platforms. But let's get those comments up. We've engaged a lot of folks on Twitter and a few folks on YouTube. Let's let's <laughs> ramp that up a little bit more. This is the end of the year, guys. Yes, if... you've, been, you've been lurking and watching our show. We know it because we see the <laughs> views, but you're not leaving a comment. Leave a comment. Say, hey, I'm tired of this Miss Marvel ban- <laughs> you know, um, freaking uh, banter or whatever. Say it. Say it. Text Thank it. you for those who do leave writing. comments. We see you. And if yes. you 
seriously do not understand the philosophy between behind young Yoda. Uh, <laughs> let me know. I will. I will set you straight. Like I've done a few times this week. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll All see right. you later. Night. Hey. Hey. Indigo made the beat. <laughs>